I've always been a passionate traveler and adventurer, and ever since I was a kid, I wanted to travel. The whole point of these trips is to get you out in nature, but in a very accessible way. Travel is, in my opinion, such an enriching experience. I've spent my life traveling and helping people travel, and you know, it can be really meaningful. My name is Ashton Palmer, and I'm here in Ecuador exploring, traveling, and showing the world what it's like to travel post-COVID. Right now, we're up in the highlands uh, outside of the town of Atavalo, we're staying at an old hacienda called Hacienda Zuleta, which was built in 1691. It's actually one of the oldest haciendas up here in the Andes. When you first pull up to this property, I think simply the size and the grandeur of presence is what's most, most impressive. I've traveled to Ecuador you know, many times over the years. I've stayed at different properties. Um, but Hacienda Zuleta is certainly one of the oldest, if not the oldest, property here. And uh, it's really impressive to be here. Traveling after and during COVID is a really interesting experience. I think that oftentimes you you think about an experience and what it's going to be like, but then when you get there, you find that it's completely different. Um, from my perspective, since arriving in the country of Ecuador, I've been nothing but impressed with the safety measures and the protocols that they've put in place. You know, Ecuador relies very much on tourism, and it's clear to me that they've taken very seriously the approaches to, to not only welcome guests back, to make, but to make sure that people can travel safely in Ecuador. And what that has translated to for visitors at the moment is this incredibly rich experience that, you know, almost feels like private travel. Like you almost have these properties and the countryside and the country to yourself. Um, I was writing to someone last night and, and saying it, it's almost to me like going back in time, you know, back to sort of the 1940s or 50s when not as many people traveled. And so you feel very uh, well taken care of. And I think we're the only guests here at the moment, which is, which is quite incredible uh, to be in this, in this, this great property uh, and to have it all to ourselves is, is really special. We journeyed from the higher Andes uh, up in the Atavalo region outside of Quito and we spent a day or two exploring uh, the hill country as it's known and then traveled by car a few hours uh, back uh, alongside Quito and then towards this area known as the Choco or the cloud forest. This particular area is an endangered part of the habitat and I'm very fortunate to be visiting Mashpee Lodge. Mashpee Lodge is one of the National Geographic unique lodges of the world. And this particular area is really just one of my favorite ecosystems on the entire planet. And it's called the cloud forest because literally it's in the clouds. And as you can see, you know, clouds roll in and through this area and really create their own weather uh, systems. It's really just a spectacular place to be. When we arrived yesterday, we made the decision in the afternoon to go on the Dragonfly, which is a cable car that spans one of the, the valleys here. Uh, at its highest point, it's about 80 meters or almost, uh, almost 300 feet above the canopy. And so you get to ride across this 
gondola, just you know, amongst the clouds, you almost feel like you're, you're flying through the forest. And that whole experience took about an hour, an hour and a half to complete. Uh, from there, we actually walked from one of the top, from the top of one of the towers down uh, into the forest and followed a river, uh, walking actually through the river and through the forest uh, for about an hour or so, um, really having an amazing time. I think one of the things that's so unique about Mashpee is that there's a variety of activities. There's some which are more strenuous than others. Uh, there are some which are really easy and you know, gentle walks. So regardless of age or ability, it is a place that you can come and really get to appreciate nature without having to put in a great amount of activity. Of course, if you do want to, a longer hike and you want to get your lungs moving, your legs moving, then there's plenty to do as well. The accommodations themselves are superb. Uh, it's really a spectacular luxury lodge. So even though you're in this really this very remote environment uh, where nature is in charge, you don't have to forgo your creature comforts. And they have spectacular food and lodging. There's even a spa. So it's really the best of both worlds. Today we woke up early, we were out uh, just after sunrise at about 6.15 this morning and we went to an area on the property where they have some hummingbird feeders. One of the things that was really wonderful was not only were we out there early and able to experience the sunrise and the amazing uh, hummingbirds and so on, but they also brought this lovely thermos of hot coffee and so uh, again, just in Mashpee style, we have the best of, of, of everything and the best of both worlds. Having access to a spectacular environment and a unique place in the world, but also not having to forgo comforts and conveniences in the process. But I think what was also special was just being uh, out in the forest early in the morning and watching the sun and light and, and really dramatic and really just you feel like you're in a, a movie, honestly, or going back in time to a time and place when, you know, nature really was uh, in charge and, and we hadn't adjusted so many of the environments. So it was a great morning and a great opportunity to just get out early and experience the, the forest. The rest of the morning was great. We actually went to another very unique experience that they have here on property, which is called the Skybike. Uh, these are uh, manually powered bicycles that are attached to a gondola wire. So if you can imagine, instead of a, a gondola where you're moving along powered by a motor, you're actually propelling this two-person bicycle across uh, the wire, uh, you know, hundreds of feet above the, the treetops. And really it is spectacular to be, you know, hundreds of feet above the canopy, looking out over this amazing landscape and knowing that you're one of the few people to have the privilege to have this experience. We also spent some time going up into one of the canopy towers. Uh, so there's a couple of hundred stairs up to the top of the tower and it pokes out above the canopy itself so that you're above and in the clouds. And we just watched the clouds coming in and out. We could see the lodge in the distance and uh, just really a great opportunity once again to feel a, a, self, a sense of presence, a sense of place and listen to the sounds, watch the birds and just really feel connected to nature in this really unique environment. So we're going to enjoy our delicious lunch here at the lodge before we will pack our bags for our next adventure, which will be heading to the Galapagos Islands.
La Pinta carries just over 40 passengers and on this particular trip we have uh, about 30 passengers. Most of the guests are from Quito, Ecuador, uh, since travel has been limited internationally until recent weeks. Uh, this particular destination of the Galapagos has been a place for local Ecuadorians to travel. But with international travel opening up, we're seeing more and more visitors starting to uh, venture out and to visit places once again. The Galapagos, even though it is a World Heritage Site and receives a lot of visitors, certainly at this time with fewer people have been traveling internationally, the islands feel very remote and, and not visited. The wildlife has been particularly curious during our trip, uh, swimming and snorkeling with the sea lions. Uh, certainly when we hike and walk around, we're very careful to not to disturb the wildlife, but it's actually quite curious. And if you sit down just for a few minutes, it will come right up to you and, 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 and sort of look and investigate. One of the things I really love about the Galapagos Islands is the variety of activities that we have here. I mean, obviously everyone comes here for the iconic wildlife. During the last few days, we've had the opportunity to visit the uh, Charles Darwin Research Center and see the breeding program for the giant tortoises, probably one of the most famous animals that you find here in Galapagos. Uh, while traveling around the different islands, we've snorkeled with playful sea lions, we've seen sea turtles and other marine life under the water, such an abundance of, of fishes and other creatures under the water. On land, uh, we've just enjoyed spending time with the playful sea lions, the different birds, the blue-footed booby, of course, and the red-footed booby. There's just such a variety of animals here in the Galapagos. Traveling aboard small, purposefully designed expedition ships is a way that you can visit some of the world's most remote and unique environments with having as little impact as possible. In fact, when you travel to places like the polar regions or the Galapagos Islands or various other remote places, there really isn't any infrastructure and they're not places that you can travel to independently. So being aboard a small, purposefully designed vessel that allows you to access these unique environments is really not only the best way from an accessibility and experience perspective, but also from an environmental perspective. You know, having minimal impact, making sure that you're not influencing the environment when you're there, allows us to get into really some incredible situations with wildlife and with environments. And really just, I find that it's, it's truly one of the best ways to travel around the world. Um, you know, certainly there are places where land travel is, is, super, is superior, but uh, many of the places that are easily accessible by oceans, whether it's the polar regions or the Amazon or Antarctica or the Galapagos Islands or some of these other places, really lend themselves perfectly to travel by small ship. Travel is a personal choice and something that we all uh, get to decide when we will want to do again. I can honestly say that I feel like being here at this time uh, not only feels safe, but is a real privilege and something that I'll remember for the rest of my life.